Many of us have heard reports that the health of our planet may be in danger. We see images and articles in the media that report that certain aspects of our planet's health are at high risk. How do we determine this risk and how do we understand what the international scientific consensus is about what this may mean for the health of our planet? The Planetary Boundaries Framework, designed by scientists at the Stockholm Resilience Center, provides a peer-reviewed measure of planetary health that we can use to determine the health of the systems on Earth. The research on this framework has been published in the two leading scientific journals. At the King's University in Edmonton, the King Center for Visualization in Science has designed an online learning tool that lets you explore the Planetary Boundaries Framework. You can learn about the framework and examine each of the Earth systems included. We'd like you to focus on how fundamental knowledge of chemistry can help you understand the delicate balance required for planetary health and the risk that human activities are destabilizing the system. The Planetary Boundaries Framework considers nine Earth systems, climate change, novel entities, stratospheric ozone depletion, atmospheric aerosol loading, ocean acidification, biogeochemical flows, freshwater use, land use, and biosphere integrity. The global climate change and biosphere integrity systems are considered core system processes, which means that they are the core indications of planetary health and that they are deeply connected to the other systems. Each Earth system has one or more control variables, which are the way we measure the overall health of that system. For example, one of the control variables for global climate change is the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and the control variable for land use is the remaining forest cover. These variables work as a proxy measurement for the health of that Earth system, while the responding variable is the overall health of that system. The atmospheric aerosol loading and novel entity systems, as well as the functional diversity part of biosphere integrity, are still being researched, and control variables have not yet been finalized or quantified for these systems. Each control variable has a planetary boundary, which defines the safe zone for that Earth system. This is indicated by the green circle. As the control variable goes beyond the planetary boundary, it first enters the orange zone where there is probably high risk of irreversible damage to the Earth system. If it goes further, it enters the red zone where we know that there is definitely high risk to the Earth system and the planet. Right now, at least one of the control variables in each of the climate change, biosphere integrity, and biogeochemical flows Earth systems are in the red zone of definite high risk, and the control variable for the land use Earth system is in the orange zone, indicating that this system is probably at high risk. The graphic indicates the current values of the control variables, and the graphs on each information panel, or the slider on the main screen can show you the value of the control variable since the year 1900. Just because we have exceeded the planetary boundary for these Earth systems does not mean that there is no hope. In the 1970s, certain chemical refrigerants released into the atmosphere started to deplete the ozone layer, making risk to that system more likely. However, humanity was able to stop the use of these chemicals and allowed the ozone hole to slowly start to repair itself. We talk about the molecular or material basis of sustainability to show that understanding the flow of materials and substances through society and the environment is crucial to a sustainable future on our planet. Most of the control variables for the nine Earth systems are directly related to chemical processes and the measurement of chemical substances. For example, the control variable for climate change is the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. This is currently at or around 410 parts per million, or 410 out of every million molecules of air are carbon dioxide molecules. The reason that carbon dioxide concentration is used to measure global climate change is deeply connected to chemistry. In the atmosphere, carbon dioxide vibrates when it absorbs infrared radiation and through processes we will study, heats up the atmosphere. The climate change Earth system is also connected to the other Earth systems. The nitrogen cycle, which includes the transformation of unusable forms of nitrogen into forms that can be used in biological processes, also releases nitrous oxide, N2O, into the atmosphere, which is another potent greenhouse gas. You can see that all these Earth systems are connected to each other. The nitrogen cycle is part of the biogeochemical flow system, but also can contribute to global climate change. Aerosols in the atmosphere are their own Earth system, but also contribute to climate change. The applet indicates this by highlighting the connected systems when one system is selected. 
The Planetary Boundaries Framework is an important and useful tool in understanding the processes that contribute to overall planetary health. By understanding these systems and the chemistry behind them, we can equip ourselves with the tools we need to start to solve the problems and bring the planet back towards balance.